You know, it's all about safe snacking. Safe snacks, not these. No, no affiliation. No, I'm, I'm serious. This, this idea, this idea I have for you here, clean, dirty ban, all right? It's, um, it's the kind of idea I really love to give away because it's very easy to get involved. It's inexpensive. You don't need a lot of scratch to do it. It's um, simple. It is really simple. It takes a little bit of scrambling, but it's really easy to get in and very easy to scale up past there, increase your margins and so forth. So I really like this idea because it can make a big difference for somebody, maybe you, maybe somebody else, but still it's fantastical. Plus, plus it's prevalent. It's, it's current. Um, so the idea is a clean dirty with clean dirty bam it's really um well it started with the pandemic we're in right right now as if you were like me the minute things started getting weird you're like washing your hands eight hundred thousand times a day right you're losing 15 layers of skin you're seeing your dermatologist every other day it's, it's pretty bad situation and i was like okay i i can't do this anymore i gotta figure out some kind of system right so what I figured out was, okay, this is going to be my dirty hand and this is my clean hand, all right? Don't, no comments. But the, uh, the idea is that you, I would then wash them, right? And then I would use my right hand to pick up stuff and do things. And then this was reserved for, you know, reaching into the delicious snack bucket. So you get a delicious snack bucket and your right, your, your dirty hand, um, would hold the bag because the bag who knows where that bag's been i just touched it so i can't even try to eat out of it who knows where this has been right now i don't know i just work here but then um the clean head would then pull the delicious snacks and feed the 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 pie hole and life is good right so that was how i did it and then i started thinking there's cases when i messed up and then if you do mess up then you rewash and you continue so it cut down on the washing for me right so it dawned on me, you know, we need a mnemonic. We need, I can't even spell that, but I can almost say it. So a mnemonic, something that indicates what you're doing. And then that's when I thought, started thinking, what about these bands, these silicon bands, right? They could be Tyvek. We'll talk about that. But these silicon bands, they're silicon. You can actually print on them. And so the idea was something like this, where you would have these silicon bands. I just label them because, you know, <clears throat> me and Art don't get along. Um, so you label them, and it's a mnemonic. It's to remind you, hey, this is the clean hand. This is the dirty hand. Now, for adults, you can probably negotiate this somewhat depending on, you know, whether it's Friday night, late, and you're having a good time. But that's a whole other story. The, um, in this case, though, for kids – it would be a really good thing. It really helps kids because kids, you know, no offense to kids watching this, but let's face it, man. I mean, I was young once too, and I was eating dirt and, you know, doing goofy things. So it's just, that's the way it is. So it would really help kids, I think a lot. And for me, um, it would help me um, personally, because I get confused. You know, if you're sitting there holding your snacks and you're flat, you're, you're holding like a chili dog or something, and you're swatting a fly away from you and you swap hands to get it from the other one, boom, you just destroyed a really, really good chili dog. And that's sad. So what we want to do here is something to remind us so that I could think about it at the last moment and go, oh, wait a minute. So this would be useful, I think. So you can see already, I mean, I can see the little light bulbs going off and two of you fell asleep, but that's okay. But the, um, the, the neat thing about this is that it's really really simple and really inexpensive to get involved with this. So I started talking about some options. So we could do silicon bands or Tyvek. Tyvek would be good for events, right? Concerts or, well, you can't do those right now, really, but you get it, right? Events, parties, whatnot. So you put them on little kids or whatever and say, hey, this is your dirty hand. This is your clean hand. Then they're going to ask some questions why that is. And, you know, you just you kind of skirt those questions I did. And um, so silicon's one way to go, and you can print on silk and get them custom printed as well. But uh, I said silk, I meant Tyvek. Silicon, though, um, is reusable, it's washable, and um, you can stylize it uh, really nicely. Okay, so I started talking about the options here. And so you could obviously go for color, right? Different colors mean hot and cold, you know, red and green, that kind of thing. 
really low barrier to entry. So you can see right now, this idea is very inexpensive to get started, right? There are lots of providers, we'll take a quick look here in a minute, that will print you as much as you want. There's usually a minimum, maybe 100 or so, which still doesn't cost very much. And then they'll go bananas and print up to whatever you need and at a better deal. So you can get involved, try it out. If it works, you ramp it up. Icons. I call them icons because they should be pretty simple in my mind, right? I'm just making this stuff up. So, you, you know, you do what you want to do. If you want to go, you know, Celtic designs and fancy stuff like that, you know, you do you. But uh, icons really uh, are clear and concise. You know, if you can do them in pairs, you know, cat and dog, um, happy, sad, you know, I put a skull and crossbone on there. Also, licensed properties. If you have an inroad to a license opportunity, holy cow, you know, you know, Darth Vader and, you know, Obi-Wan, you know, you, you get it, right? Batman, Joker, you can go crazy, crazy with this stuff. And then, of course, there's text, too, if you just want to do text. Um, and I have a few options there. Good, bad, Sith, Jedi, you know, if you, whatever hand's going to be Sithy today is is the hand you stay away, right? So that's the idea. But of course, the icons, the graphical ones that you do are the ones that you can actually copyright and protect. So everything else, though, if it's a word, good luck. You can stylize the text, but someone can just change the font and move on. So definitely you'll want to um, consider those things. So the idea is super simple. The really big issue is the manufacturing, packaging, selling. So you're saying, hey, this sounds pretty good. So you're going to want to pause. I know you can find a graphic designer to help you out, and you probably have some ideas already spooling around in your head. Um, and obviously, if you go over here, um, let's see, I have, yeah. If you do a quick Google search, and I have a link that just pulls these up for you, but you can see that there's just tons and tons of people or companies that will build you all kinds of custom, even embossed. You can go bananas and get them embossed, not just printed. And of course, higher, you know, you want to find out who does the higher quality ones. Do They should be reusable. They shouldn't fall apart, right? If you want to find most of these, I would say, are probably overseas, even though sometimes they pose like they are local, local phone number, but then you channeled overseas. Yeah, I am very familiar with that. So if you want to find someone local, you know, U.S., if you're U.S., U.K., Germany, wherever, you have to work a little harder, but they're there. They're there. You just got to look for them and uh, ask some questions. But so it's really easy to um, to find uh, someone that will build you uh, a set to get you started. Packaging. Packaging and branding is everything because it's really low barrier to entry. I would say you probably get in for less than a few hundred dollars or less after you buy the packaging and freight in and package them up and then you have to decide where you're going to sell them. Then at that point, um, uh, I guess what I'm saying is that because they're so simple to do, your brand is going to what is what's going to distinguish you. The artwork on the wristband itself, as well as the packaging. Right. So I have some ideas. I'm not saying they're good ideas or just ideas. You know, you take them and decide for yourself. So um, I like these Mylar bags and these are these are examples of Mylar bags. You give them kind of a space agey look. Right. Because, you know, it kind of feels like it's very clean. It should be. Of course, you should package them very sterilely um, and uh, very clean and concise. This one's opaque, though. So if you do an opaque bag, you're going to have to do a color print on there probably, right? If you're going to do any point of sale type of distribution, we'll talk about that in just a minute. This one is a little translucent, so you can actually kind of see through it. So that's that's a little better, right? Um, alternatively, same kind of thing here. Alternatively, you could go with the cheaper poly bags. And then, of course, you can see the color as it is rendered on the device itself with the graphics. So that's really nice. You can get away with either a hang tag or a um, or a simple uh, label on the front there. So it's a lot, lot uh, cheaper to get involved with poly bags. This is two mil poly bags, or my but mylar to me looks very techy because if you can get them pretty small and put the bands in there, these are kid sized bands. They're not going to work on adults, but you can actually go smaller than this bag. And this bag looks like it's a three by four, so you can get them pretty small and then. I'd like to heat seal these things. You could have them so that they can reseal them. There's an, there's arguments for either way. Um, 
my favorite place to go for this kind of stuff is Uline um, in the U.S. Um, they're not this necessarily the cheapest, but their quality has always been top notch. I've been using them for 10 years and I'm not sponsored or anything. Um, so I just buy their stuff and use it. And I've been using their stuff to package my products for a very long time. So these are the metalized food bags and you can have an open end or you can have closed end and you can heat seal them. I like the heat seal idea because it gives it kind of a, Hey, it's packaged and sealed. And of course, you know, you should definitely handle them and package them in a sterile kind of situation but they are solid so you would need a color label which drives the cost up a little bit color labels are pretty easy to buy if you want to buy them in volume alternatively um, you could go with something like a barrier pouch right you can see a barrier pouch here and I have a link to this for you guys in the post so you can see there's different glossy with a little window so you could do that these are a bit more expensive but if you want to go that, so you could just put a black and white label on there, you know, clean, dirty band or whatever you want to call it. You can probably find something a little more creative. Still, you get it, right? It's pretty cool stuff. So there's a lot of options there with um, Uline. So I like to use Uline. And the neat thing about Uline is they'll give you samples. So you say, hey, I'd like to try out your two by three metalized Mylar bag. And they'll say, okay. You have to register first, but after that, they'll say, okay, we'll send you one. We'll send you two. They also send you a giant catalog. Okay, whatever. Um, so they'll give you a couple samples just so you can try it out and fit it to your, your brace or bracelets. Yeah, well, we're not doing that yet. Um, to your uh, wrist bands and get this, get it right, put the package on, do some pre vis on it, and then you're good to go. So it, it's pretty fantastic. Uh, I like working with them. Um, so branding is everything. Your name of your company, the icon, the logo, you know, is it high tech, cool? Is it going to be simple? I would not recommend um, competing cheap because what's going to happen is you, let's say you do this and then it starts bloom, booming, right? And you're doing well. Someone's going to see that and go, this guy's making money. We're going to make money. We're going to cut in and we're going to do something different, but we're going to brand it. So it just depends on how you feel about it. Uh, my opinion is uh, try and go in with guns blazing. Uh, so, you know, get your marketing set up. You know, not marketing, but get your um, uh, branding set up, the packaging. Is it high tech? Is it simple? Is it fun? You know, that's the thing you should think about the most because fundamentally you can hire someone to do the design work or do it yourself. You know, download some license free artwork from, you know, uh, uh, one of the uh, photo stock photo places. Get, get the extended license on them and then you can actually use it for resale. It's kind of expensive. It depends on if you find exactly what you want. But that's there's many ways to slice this to get out there quickly. You could deploy probably within less than a month, I would think, and, you know, with your first few hundred packages. Now, Amazon. I've done Fulfilled by Amazon for quite a long time. You're not going to be able to sell individual packets of these things on Amazon because it's just – There'll be no, the margins are bad. So your margin figure is cut in half. So whatever you sell it for, if it's fulfilled by Amazon, Amazon will chop off half of it. So, you know, you have to go, you have to keep that in mind. So when you sell on Amazon, margins are something to be very considered. And they have a calculator to, so you can figure out if you're going to be able to make money there. In my opinion, because these should sell for, you know, a few dollars maybe, depending on what kind of deal you get, then... You're going to want to probably do multi-packs if you sell on Amazon. And I do encourage you to own an Amazon space. If you can do FBA on Amazon, and probably early on, I don't know. You, it's, probably, it's a really good place to sell it. So I would probably do selling on Amazon early, sell multi-packs, which makes sense for families anyway. Um, and it could be a multi-pack uh, with different varieties or just one type of thing, whatever. And, you know, sell them in multi-packs. And then uh, at Uline, you can buy boxes that allows you to package them up in multi-packs. So the packaging goes up, but you can also bump up your margins a bit. And Amazon takes half, but you don't have to fulfill. Otherwise, Etsy, eBay, all those wonderful places could allow you to do that as well. Um, the only other thing, uh, let's see, I was trying to think of one more thing I was, was wanted to say regarding this, um, is, uh, oh, I encourage you, if you want to do this, I encourage you to look at special things like in here. And I say it, I actually mentioned it in here. Specialty markets, um, um, 
elementary schools, right? Daycare centers, amusement parks. You could direct sales. So if you're a salesman and you were like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go pitch this to them, you know, then you can pitch this to them and they can advertise it as a safer way and they can give it to it, people as a, on a, in entry uh, into the amusement park or daycare centers use it to help educate the kids how to keep their hands clean and use one hand for dirty tasks, one hand for clean tasks. So you can see how you could probably bulk sale there to uh, do do well. And if you do, if you do have the connections, if you do have the connections into grocery stores, department stores, convenience stores, um, convenience stores are a little easier to approach because usually they're privately owned, right? And the owner is just, you know, it's a, he's a, he or she is a stone's throw away if they're not working the counter themselves. So they can easily say, yeah, I'll take a, a dozen of them and hang them out on a display. And there you go. And if you want to display, build a display case and go bananas, um, that's really easy to do. Just Google that. And there's lots of companies that build you nice little display cases I made out of cardboard and you can print them, have them printed and stuff. Lots of options there. But point of purchase, right? I'm standing in the line, you know, trying to look at stuff, waiting in line. You know, all there is, there's tabloids, but then there's these clean, dirty band. And of course, clean, dirty band instantly makes you do a double take, I think. I know. It's like one of those glam rock bands from the 80s. I was there. It was survivable. So there are lots of options. The uh, blueprint here I gave you gives outlines that. If you have any questions, by all means, uh, ask me and I will try to answer them the best I can if you need any pro tips or otherwise. So hopefully you find this useful, you get excited maybe to uh, start something new. I really think this is, is a really neat idea to just kind of get going and trying to sell stuff. So who knows? Who knows? All right. So that's about it. Hopefully you found this interesting. Maybe it inspired you to go out there and start selling some clean, dirty bands. I don't know, but it's an interesting way to, uh, to it's a really valid right now. That's why I'm excited about it. It's valid. And this isn't going away anytime soon. So, you know, you could probably start tomorrow and get them out there. And I don't, you know, people, are, this is a really good idea, I think, to uh, help people manage uh, the storm we're currently in. So life is all about experience points. Make sure you go out there and get some. Take care.